What if you had a dream and it came true? Imagine that. When I was bitten by the bug, everything else went out the window. I listened for several years before I picked up an instrument. My parents were kind of concerned because I just played records all day. I didn't sound like uh, everyone else. And I, there's something about my voice that stuck out that people remembered. So maybe it, it, it's a blessing in a way. And I think when we started out, we, when we made our first record, I remember saying, you know, if we, if we really do great, we could get five years out of this, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and it's just gone on and on. When we started this, there, there weren't people that age making rock and roll records, you know? So it wasn't even a thought at the time, you know? You just thought by then you'd be in some other line of work. Certainly the Rolling Stones had a, a big effect on the when it's over aspect. We always sort of look to them because they're a little older than us. I've never really thought of myself as having a career or anything. I think, I think if you're thinking about your career, you don't have one. Because when you do, you're just, you're too busy to think about it. But it's not really a career, you know? I mean, we'd, we'd do the same thing if we weren't getting any money or, you know, that's what's so funny about it is we would have, we don't know how to do anything else. We've done this since we were really young. I couldn't hold down a job if I had to. So all I'd be doing is the same thing. It's nice that people, you know, pump it up to that stage of, you know, ooh, it's a career. But really, we thought, you know, in the late 60s, or, you know, like when we were going to start, we thought it was, it was abandoning any sense of career. We didn't go to school. We, we were probably going to screw up somewhere down the road. So it's just a series of nice accidents. It's almost like fantasy land, you know, you go there and tour this place that no date is more than an hour apart. It was a wonderful time. George Harrison, you know, and Ringo, they, they, that was when I first met them and, you know, we've remained friends. You know, I was really in awe of all of them. I was just a young kid and, um, New in town, and I, it was it was fantastic to watch them all work. I think what they shared in, in common, all these you know mega stars that were coming through that I admired so much was just they had such a passion for what they were doing and such a focus. It was just fantastic, you know. And everybody, I learned right then too. Everybody has a different way of getting where they want to go, you know. I just tried to observe and learn as much as I could. Well, when we first went back to America, you know, it's take out the trash. You're no star around here. But we did, we got a little buzz going. Things started to happen for us. Breakdown came out on the radio almost a year after it had been out and was a, was a hit. Baby, break down. Go ahead, give it to me. Break down, honey, take me through the night. Break down, now I'm standing here. Can you see? Break down, it's all right. It's all right. I met Jimmy Iovine, sight unseen, I called him. He had done this Patti Smith record. And I loved the sound of the drums on the record and I called him and turned out he was a big fan. And, um, and he came out and he, you know, we were about the same age. 
But we started palling around Hollywood. We had a great time, and we we had this song, Refugee, that Jimmy was really keen on. We must have recorded it a couple hundred times, over and over. It was just, it got where it wasn't a day of it anymore. It was just whatever you were doing, you had a shot at Refugee every day until Jimmy got the one that he thought was great. I'd given up on it. I'd just gone, you know, I can't tell anymore. But I think he was right because he got a really great record of it that really holds up all these years later. Of all places, Los Angeles didn't get MTV right away. So we'd never seen it. And we'd always done um, what we call promo clips where you'd lip sync your song on film and it'd be sent out to usually everywhere you couldn't get to or you didn't want to get, you know, if there, there'd be like, shows you didn't want to go on and you'd seen them in tape and they'd sort of act like you were on the program but really it was just a film of you doing your songs we got fed up with that and we thought it'd be so great to do one what we didn't sing at all you know and so we went out to the desert and we made this one for um you got lucky And I think it was probably the first kind of narrative video. It got sent to MTV and was a, a huge success, and we'd be in airports, and it was where we, we first noticed that we were being recognized by people that weren't young. If we're gonna make another little movie, let's, let's make it even stranger than the one before, you know? So, yeah, we, we we got in on the video thing. What if you had a dream and it came true? Imagine that. That's what that was like. I was like, well, damn, it happened. And then you're faced with dealing with, you know, what if you had a dream and it came true and then it's all right in your lap and you've got to deal with it. You've got to keep striving and reaching or it won't continue. Especially if you're the songwriter, you know, it's, it's all great, but it only, it's only as good as the next song you write. You've 
you've got to keep coming up with more songs. So I think some members of the group had a wilder time in that period than I did because I, I was really at the piano or with, with the guitar sort of stressing about, oh, I've got to get 12 more songs together. You know, so we can go in and make another album, and then boy, now everyone's looking, and you feel a little more self-conscious about it. Like, oh, it's got to be good. <laughs> we got a star on Hollywood Boulevard, and uh, there was another one where we we really never discussed it or said anything about it until the day we were actually there getting it. And the street was just filled with people, you know, and it felt like they were really genuinely, they were fans, you know, and they were there. We weren't gonna sing or anything. And they were just there to support us. And I was kind of touched by it. I think the whole group was. I never even had that that dream that we would be, you know, sort of eternalized on the sidewalk. I think when you get my age, you, you can't have a different view at them. You know, when I was younger, I, I really didn't put much stock in them or, or uh, pay much attention to it. And then as you get older, you kind of go, or if you've been doing it a long time, you go, well, that, and that was kind of nice, you know, that, Someone noticed that we've been around a while doing good work. I'm really grateful to the, the people that have, you know, bought the records and come to the shows and been so loyal to us.